When I was a little boy down on my grandmama's place. You know, it was so hot down there in the summertime that, uh, you know, the shade trees would get up and look for some shade. You know, and it always seemed like on the hottest day, mama would say, let's go to town. My grandmama lived, you know, about three miles out from town, I guess it was. But you had to take a bus to town. And that meant, you know, walking about, I guess, a mile or so to the bus line. Over them dusty country roads. So mama would get me dressed up to go to town. I didn't want to go to town to begin with. You know, especially on them hot days. Wasn't nothing in town for me to except, you know, stand around and watch her while she bought some material. And that take all day, it seemed like. But mom would, you know, dress me up in a clean shirt and put on some of them short pants. I don't know whether the little boys wear short pants now. But when I was coming up, I had to wear them. And I was little, you know. I mean, I was so skinny, you know, even birds used to come around and laugh at me. But mama get me all dressed up, she called it, you know, clean shoes and some little clean socks and take me by my little hand and gone off down these hot, dirty roads. I don't know if you've been out in the country or not, but you know, out in the country on them hot summer days, you know, the dust, with the dirt in the road, you know, just sort of comes up over your shoes sometimes, it's so thick. So I'd like to Lord put on some brown flour every place. And you can't stay clean in that sort of nonsense. But mama would expect me to stay clean while we walking this mile and a half to the bus line. I'd get to the bus line looking as dirty as I was before she put the clothes on me. Which, you know, she didn't appreciate too much either. But we'd have to stand by the side of the highway, you know, for I guess 15 minutes, 20 minutes sometimes, half hour, who knows how long. Sun beating down that hot ass you know, until the bus came. Then we gone and get on the bus. When I got on. I sat down in the very front seat When I got on the bus I 
I sat down in the front seat But mother took me by my hand Said that seat's not for me And she'd take me on to the back of the bus You know, I was about seven years old, you know And so I said to her, I said, well, Mama, why can't I sit up there? You know, everybody turned around and looked at me, you know and I didn't know what was going on She just said, Hush, Bernard, you asked too many questions Well, you know, when my mama said that, that meant shut up so I didn't say anything else. But you know, I looked up at the front of the bus and I saw this sign over the bus driver's head. And the sign read, colored seat from the rear, white seat from the front. Well, you know, you have to understand that I was kind of little and I, I was sort of confused because you see, my father, my father's very, very dark. And my mama's light. Grandmama, well, my grandmama was so light, you know, that she could pass. And I had an uncle that if I had known he was my uncle, you know, I'd have thought he was white. So, you know, I looked at that sign. You know, I couldn't figure out where my family fit into all that. I mean, would Uncle Oscar have to sit up front while Daddy sat in the back and Grandmama sit in the middle? Or, you know, I didn't know what was going on. And I kept looking at that sign. It, you know, pretty soon it became like a like a neon sign, you know, sort of flashing on and off, you know, over over me, over my head, like I was a restaurant or something. You know, and it, it, it identified me in some sort of way. Colored seat from the rear. So anyway, we went on down in town, you know, and Mama went on to do her shopping. Now, Pine, Pine Bluff at that time, that was about 13 to 14 years ago, you know, was a little bitty town. A few stores, you know, J.C. Penny type thing, you know, and dime store. And the sun, you know, I don't know, it seemed like the sun was making love to the pavement. Just, just, just lying on top of it, all on top of that hot asphalt and things. Lord, it was so hot, so hot. I knew the devil. Tried to buy a fan. It was so hot, so hot. The devil would have tried to buy a fan. It was so hot, so hot. Not a woman didn't even want a man. It was hot, all right, you know, and from the minute we left the house, you know, I'd been getting thirsty. Hot as it could be, all I could think about was water. So finally we went into a dime store, Woolworth, or Kresge, or one of them, you know. And I saw these two water fountains. One of them said white, and one of them said colored. Well, the first thing coming to my mind, this is the truth. You know, I never heard of colored water, you know, and uh, I thought that's what the sound was referring to. You could have your choice of water. It was Arkansas. I was little. I didn't have no better sense. So I decided I wanted white water. Colored water didn't sound good to me, no, how it looked like mud, like the Missouri River or something like that. So I started on toward the water fountain. And mama grabbed me by the hand and she said, you aren't thirsty, Bernard. I said, mama, yes, I am thirsty. 
She said, no, you on Thursday. I said, mama, how you going to tell me whether I'm thirsty or not? You ain't inside my throat. I'm thirsty. She said, but no, you on Thursday. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell mama she was lying, but there wasn't nothing I could do about it. Mother, mother. You know, I couldn't tell mama she was lying, but there wasn't nothing I could do about it. Mother, mother, tell me who did I do wrong? Mother. Lord, and you treat me like I'm doing wrong. 